Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report, and we have Harley Schlanger with some remarkable stories. Of course, the story that came out last night uh, that's now blasting across the blogosphere, the uh, regular media, is a story that over three to 400 uh, people were completely in the knowledge in real time that this is a terror attack, terror attack by Ansar al-Sharia uh, against the compound. They waited seven hours when they could have scrambled uh, aircraft from Italy, uh, literally an hour away, by air. They did no actions when when there were different waves of attack. And then Obama and the State Department literally lied to the public. And one thing is wrong. You can make a mistake and admit it when you're president. But when you lie and cover up, and Richard Nixon learned this, the cover up is worse than the crime. Uh, And Obama is going to go down over this if we continue to apply the pressure because this is a rookie who doesn't know how to manage foreign policy and knew damn well that the Anshar al-Sharia and al-Qaeda forces were being armed by American troops and by Academy, the Blackwater Security and private SAS forces from Britain. This is what's going on. To give us more information on this uh, about EIR, which is Executive Intelligence Review, also warned about Anshar al-Sharia back in the 2000 dossier and how... Romney, I can see from the debates, will work with both Democrats and Republicans. He can work across the uh, the aisle. He can work with independents. He wants to get America back working. You can see from the debates he established three things. He's presidential, he's work, willing to work bipartisan, and he's not an egomaniac. I think his most important thing is he's not Obama. And yeah. at this point, Obama's yeah. got to go. Now, oh, let me just sort through this from the top, because... Uh, there are new stories coming out, and there's also a lot of disinformation coming out from the administration. Uh, but it wasn't just the State Department and the White House that put out a phony story. It was also the intelligence community that pr- tried to protect the president. It was the White House that put out the phony story. And the State Department, in the form of Hillary Clinton, and the intelligence community, in the person of James Clapper, the director of national intelligence, both came out with a, a story. Hillary just said that the buck stops with her, which in some sense, to tell you the truth, is an attack on Obama because it shows that he got the 3 a.m. call and he didn't answer it. But with Clapper, this is serious. When the, milit- when the intelligence community allows a lie to perpetuate itself for the sake of protecting a president, it gets at what you were talking about. What's Obama covering up? Number one, this is not a rookie mistake. This is policy. It's the policy of the U.S. government under uh, Bush, C, Bush Jr. rather and Obama to ally itself with the Anglo-Saudi forces that run international so-called Muslim terrorism. And that's what Obama has done. Number two, this is the network, the Saudi U.S. armed network that overthrew Gaddafi which killed our ambassador and three others. And the Ansar al-Sharia, you're right, we put out a dossier in 2000, which included them in the list. And there's no way the intelligence community didn't know that they were involved in this attack on Benghazi, on our forces in Benghazi. So the third point, then, is what are they covering up? They're covering up the record of many, many years of the U.S. being allied with this British, Saudi, jihadist terror network, going back to Afghanistan, going back to the people who were responsible for 9-11. And so the issue here is how do you allow a president who is allying with the very forces that killed Americans on September 11, 2001, how do you let that person even compete for a second term? We, the American people are guilty of a war crime if we re-elect this guy. Because yeah, you're exactly. re-electing someone who's going to war. Well, let's put it this way. We have an estimated 30,000 so-called Syrian Free Army. Uh, the vast majority of the ones that are heavily armed coming in there are not Syrian citizens. They're from Qatar. They're from the Arab Emirates. And they're mainly from Saudi Arabia. Paid hu- they're handsomely also to go in pa- there. Pa- they're also Pakistan. from Pakistan, Egypt, and Libya. Right, and it may be even into from Indonesia, but what's going on is they're coming in as armed militia terrorists. These they have experience going to, to Tunisia, and they're going in there highly paid to not only kill 
Syrian police and military, but Syrian citizens, including Christians, and to burn down churches. And even the attack that, that shelled this, this little village in Turkey was almost certainly done by these characters that are supported by our administration that's arming them, giving them intelligence and satellite phones, etc., so that they can target cities to start a dialectic of conflict between Turkey and Syria. Well, and then you have the, the fraud of Obama and John McCain saying, well, we have to arm them now so that the Al-Qaeda-linked forces don't take over. The Al-Qaeda-linked forces are the ones taking over. They're, they're the ones who do suicide bombings. When in our history have Amer- the, has our government supported suicide bombers? And yet when the suicide bombers hit the Syrian defense ministry, Syrian intelligence, it was cheered on by the president, by the so-called Republican opposition of John McCain and and, uh, Lindsey Graham. This just shows we have lost our mind at the top. And the, the issue here is what's behind the U.S. commitment to support these terrorists. It's not that Obama is a radical Muslim jihadist. He's someone who is being deployed by a foreign power, namely the British and the British Empire. The, yeah, and the British Empire made the their... United States. Right, and the British, by the way, are using this dialectic, which is working with elements of the Israeli Mossad and the uh, Saudi Arabian secret police, etc., and these elements of extreme Islam now wanting to put a caliphate in there, which is dangerous right. for Israel, dangerous for the supply of oil in the world in the Middle East, dangerous for the release of biological weapons that were transferred from the Russians with the fall of the Soviet Union to Iran and Syria. And uh, Mr. Assad has made it very plain and clear he wants to maintain security over these RDX and high-explosive uh, VX nerve gas uh, depots. A lot of them came, were transported by Russia safely to Syria. If the Salafi Muslims and the Al-Qaeda maniacs get a hold of them, they'll try to use them on Israel and on us, and they'll even transport them into America and out of the sites. We'll see a level of terrorism. Uh, it will be unsafe for an American to go anywhere. Well, it's, even it's, in... here's the simple point. You don't turn governments over to terrorists because you don't like the existing government. What exactly. Is it they don't like, what is it they don't like about Assad? That Assad doesn't have American-style democracy? Well, who does in the Middle East? But under Assad, just as, and I'll make a very controversial comment, under Saddam Hussein in Iraq, you had at least peace between the religious and ethnic minorities. You had opportunity for women. You know, when, when the president says he's for women's rights, well, are there women's rights in Saudi Arabia? Of course not. But there are doctors and lawyers and in uh, Syria. There were in Iraq. So we've attacked regimes that, while we may not like everything they do, were the more open, more secular of the Arab regimes and used money that came in from oil and other resources. But, but even the, the actions of... Even the actions of, uh, of uh, Saddam Hussein were literally managed by the CIA. The conflict well, between Iraq and Iran was simply over the oil fields, the bordering between the countries, encouraged by the CIA and the powers that be in the, essentially well, it, the, uh, it, it, it the new century uh, guys, I call them, you know, the, 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 the maniacs that, that run the Bush administration now run the Obama. People don't realize that this crosses, uh, whether it's Democrat or Republican, the powers that be behind this, which are even coming in conflict with the Joint Chiefs of Staff, because I really think a lot of this information leaking out now, the Joint Chiefs have had, a, are, are in a sense, pulling the plug on Obama. Well, Bill, let me just tell you, it goes beyond oil, because this is what real geopolitics is about. It's about how forces above governments can manipulate and control and weaken the powers of sovereign governments to be able to conduct whatever operations they wish. And that's what the U.S. government is doing now. It's giving the power over to these private financial interests who have no interest in having Iraq's oil money go to provide education to Iraqi children. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Their interest was to uh, pass it over to the Rothschilds to sell it to the Chinese. So now the China Oil Company is the fifth largest oil refining company on the planet since the Gulf Wars. Bankrupting America and turning the Middle East into a toxic, depleted uranium waste zone.
and we're back with uh, Harley Schlanger. Harley, uh, last night I saw one of the reports by two uh, pollsters that were former Democratic pollsters, and they talked about the high probability of a, quote, October surprise now that, that Obama is slipping in the polls. And the Rasmussen poll now literally puts, I think now over a week, of a four-point advantage to Romney. Now, what's being established is three things, that Romney is presidential, but people thought he was a nutcase, and of course they talk about the fact he's a Mormon and so on. Yes, Mormonism is weird, but there's decent people everywhere, whether they're Catholics, they're Buddhists, or whatever. There's decent Muslims that don't believe in Sharia law here in America. What we have, though, is a situation where now Obama is coming off looking like a rookie, looking like a psychopath, looking like someone who thinks he can prance around like a rooster, and then cover up things like uh, literally funding Ansar al-Sharia when they knew, the intelligence departments knew that these people were dangerous because they were more interested in funding these new terrorists so they can get rid of, of Assad in Syria. Now, this situation is a scenario that can go real bad, and uh, they literally talked about the idea that now Obama is going to sit in the Situation Room with his guys with the video controls and do another drone attack trying to kill the guys that we gave the weapons to that did the regime change that killed our uh, ambassador there. And by the way, Ambassador uh, Chris Stevens must also have had blood on his hands because he was collaborating with these different so-called Syrian Free Army groups uh, that were in Libya before they became the Syrian Free Army, these tribal groups who were actually doing regime change. So I think that they were killing one of their own brown shirts. I think that they figured, well, he knows too much. Might as well kill him because he's too friendly with these uh, peoples and he knows too much. And uh, they did nothing. I mean, they literally put him out on a stick and say, kill him. Well, I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that that's exactly what happened because I don't know exactly what he was up to. And we just have himself, to look at timelines. But he, he, he himself, <coughs> he himself well, was warning of these groups getting out of control. Well, let's look that, at the that facts. That we so. do know. We, 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 we know that a couple well, of things. We know that. Just, 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 just look. Yeah, that, that, I, I don't want to get diverted here because there's a lot that we could say about this thing, but a, yeah. a lot of it's coming out in the main press. I think what you and I have to do is establish for people what the real issue, the gut, hardcore, underlying issue is right. in the next two weeks. Because everyone listening to this program has to work for the defeat of Obama. You yes. cannot allow your neighbors or your grandmother or your cousins to sit it out saying they're all bad. Obama is the worst. Now, when you talk about uh, this question of rookie mistakes, you know, I think the, the, the thing with Obama is that he's over his head in terms of his leadership. He's just following a plan given to him. But the important thing is he was chosen because he's not a real person. He's a, he's a phony resume. He's an empty, hollow man, which was revealed in the first debate when he could not raise his voice to defend his policies. Now, of course, you and I would say his policies are indefensible, which is true, but right. he couldn't even give a lying, bullying, bullying report because he didn't have a teleprompter to help him. Yeah, and the only thing he can do is actually have what we call rote attacks against Romney when Romney asks substantive questions of Obama. And get protected then by Candy Crowley <clears> in the second <throat> debate. So what you're dealing with in Obama is what Lyndon LaRouche identified back in April of 2009, a Nero figure, someone who takes a certain amount of evil joy in the suffering of others. This idea that, that he's saving American lives by using drones, he's actually creating more terrorists that in the long run, if we don't get them out and change things, will cost more American lives. The idea that the United States is now using the tactics of terrorists. For example, when we shoot a drone into Yemen and blow up a target, whether it's a legitimate target or not, we then, when they gather, when the family gathers and medics come in, we send off another drone. That's an old mafia tactic. That's a terrorist tactic. That's not the rule of law that, that we uh, defend as the basis of international relations. So this man is an abject criminal. So the, right. the thing I would say, the most important point in our discussion today for me is to get across to people that you have to lift heaven and earth to make sure this guy is not reelected. Now then the second point is, once you get Obama out, there are many policies that could be adopted 
to address the crisis and that LaRouche Pack, we've identified many of them. And there are some of them which are copacetic with some of Romney's positions. Some of them Romney opposes. We're going to have to fight to get a, a bipartisan coalition. But here's why I think that's possible. If you take Obama out as, as president, the Democratic Party what doesn't have to defend him anymore. You're right. going to raise the IQ of the Democrats by 100 points just by getting rid of Obama. Yeah, it's right a, really, now, a really good thing. In other words, we had, like I mentioned when I talked to Keisha Rogers, who's running in the 22nd District as a Democrat, we need bipartisan support to move government forward so we can solve these big problems before, because the world needs a strong, stable, and righteous America, not an unrighteous country that supports absolutely, terrorists. Absolutely right. But I, I would say, actually, I, I misspoke when I said bipartisan. I think we need nonpartisan because the party. Well, yeah, we, we, we need to have we need to have people that can go beyond party uh, exactly. platforms and act uh, yeah. issue by issue with their conscience, logic, common sense. For the and sake of the nation and a national mission <laughs> in the future. Because exactly. What we're seeing is a lot of Democrats will privately say they don't agree with Obama on this, they don't agree on that. For example, on the health care bill, remember there were 54 so-called blue dog Democrats who were going to vote against the bill, and they ended up voting for it because they were told you've got to support the Democratic president or we're not going to cut off your funds, we're not going to support you for re-election, and so on. Many of them decided to retire after they voted for the health care bill. Many of their seats were taken by Republicans in the 2010 election. So many Democrats know in their heart and in their mind that Obama is being deployed to destroy the better part of what was good in the Democratic Party. Now, likewise, a lot of Republicans know that the neocons put the nation in danger, that the people who got... Bush and, and Cheney, actually, the neocons were being directed by Tony Blair. So this was an outside force to destroy the country. But they lined up to support Bush in 2004 for party reasons. So what we've got to do, if we get rid of Obama and free the Democrats of this evil weight on their head, as LaRouche calls him, maybe they'll be smart enough to sit down with the Republicans and say, look, We've got to do something about the too-big-to-fail banks, so we've got to go with Glass-Steagall. We've got to do something about the joblessness, which means we've got to go with great projects like Nawapa. We've got to do something about rebuilding our communities and our schools and our roads, which means we need a credit system so that funds will be available for the local businesses that want to build things. Now, right. we, that, these are not Democratic or Republican talking points. These are things the nation needs. And right. that's what LaRouche is talking about. And he'll be giving another webcast this uh, Friday night on LaRouchePack.com at 8 p.m. Eastern, where he'll be discussing these issues. Now, what you're saying is basically the broad principles of how to rebuild the Republic of America and how to act as a leader for a world where we have independent nations that operate in a logical and reasonable fashion to reduce the fever pitch toward war, uh, economic warfare, which is going on right now, marching toward World War III at the moment with Obama at the helm. talk about this in the hour three with Professor James McCanny, but I want to open up this issue of what happened in Italy, where an earthquake happened several years ago, and uh, six scientists now have been sentenced to prison for multiple year, multi-year sentences for not warning people about an earthquake, and 300 people died. Now, there was a lot of uh, discussion. Some people said that we may be able to predict it in some ways. Some people said they couldn't. But the political follow to this is really interesting. I want you to give your analysis, Harley, as to what this means to people developing technologies for anything. Uh, the magnetosphere collapsing of the South uh, Atlantic anomaly, if that comes to ground level over, say, uh, southern uh, South America, uh, Rio de Janeiro, it could kill people. 
if we don't understand the science of prediction of earthquakes, of the geomagnetosphere, of uh, ultraviolet light, etc., it means many of these scientists are probably going to go underground to be terrified to even publish, because if they don't warn, they're going to go to prison. Well, this is a, this is a horrible development that actually goes back to the time of Fukushima, where there were some Japanese researchers, some Russian researchers, and also some Italian and American researchers, who said they were beginning to get to the point where they could chart the relationship between solar emissions, changes in the, the uh, stratosphere and the biosphere, and on Earth, that led to uh, activity, including volcanic activity and earthquakes. And this is still a pretty young science, but it's based on the idea that there's a dynamic interrelationship between what happens in near space and on Earth that it's not just a simple matter of, of plates moving, which is the long, old-time definition of what an earthquake is, but because a whole lot of the Earth is molten, and there's all kinds of, of things that, that move uh, under the Earth and that are moved by much bigger magnets than anything we have on Earth, if you think about right. the solar system. So people like Sergei Pulinets of Russia, uh, there's a group of people in uh, Italy in something which is called the Advisory Board on Natural Threats, who have been looking into the question of earthquakes. And, of course, Italy, uh -huh. because of volcanoes and, and potential earthquakes, is an important point for that. Well, they've so done research happened, here in California on this issue of yeah. geomagnetic stress lines and, and tell your occurrence, which you can measure. They actually have the project going on with universities here in California. Uh, we know that Stan Dale had data from the Navy that looked at the ocean temperature and the piezoelectric energy release caused a temperature difference across the fault line in the oceans that could predict those fault lines when they crossed into land would indicate it could cause a tsunami out in the ocean or it could trigger off a land-based very large earthquake and he had a I think 75 to 80 percent prediction rate until two and a half years ago they pulled the data and would allow them to have access to it so it's not just an issue of uh, of, of saying now you're going to go to jail if you publish that you could predict. It's also restricting the data that the military or even one branch of government won't give to another branch or scientists or the public to actually come up with new ideas and how to interpret it. Well, I think it's overall an attack on science, and it's coherent with Obama slashing the space program <clears throat> and space slashing other scientific research, the Lawrence Livermore Fusion Program and others. But just so your listeners know what happened in Italy, there was an earthquake in a town called L'Aquila, and I think about, uh, I think you said 300 people died. Five days before that, there was some, uh, some tremors, and they asked this uh, scientific body if they could predict a major seismic event, and they concluded that they couldn't really know, but they thought it was improbable. Now, what happened is when the earthquake hit five days later and people were killed, a legal case was brought against them for not issuing the warning that would have led to an evacuation. Now, maybe they were afraid that if they had told the truth and said they know something about a major seismic event and there would have been an evacuation and, it, and then the earthquake didn't happen, they would probably be thrown in jail for the cause of what they did then. Well, people so, often die of evacuations. Here's one of the things. The government needs to come up with a simple policy to say, if there's at least a level of science that indicates we're going to protect the scientists if they trigger an evacuation because it's better to evacuate safely than to wait until a big earthquake hits. And, that's right. You know, some of the scientists goes back a long way, you know, centuries where they could smell funny smells near Mount Vesuvius or there were strange tellure currents that drove, uh, you know, insects and snakes out of the ground going right back to the times of the, of the Greeks 2,600 years ago. You know, there's been observations done that indicates we have all kinds of advanced technology uh, that was probably being hidden from the public. In fact, we even well, have and space also, based. And also, Dr. Deagle, you have to allow this to be transparent. You have to allow the scientists right. to interact across fields and in, across countries in international cooperative effort. What was done in Italy is that it was announced yesterday that six employees or seven members of this commission were sentenced to six years in jail because they didn't predict the earthquake. Now, what this led to is a uh, cross-the-board resignation of the entire membership of this body, which means that there's no civil protection uh, in Italy right now. And the problem you have is that 
in areas of this sort which are still uh, researching, still involved in that, if you come in with a, an Inquisition-like decree, you're going to scare off scientists. Well, it's and, not just in this area, it's any area. We see it already in medicine. There's I was just going to say that it's medicine it, it, is the same thing. It, it, you could have, for example, an area where, for example, I just heard recently that there's some doctors that listen to my program and listen to check out other things, and they've adopted some of the technology we've recommended that's present in Europe and Brazil and elsewhere in a special clinic run by American doctors in Cabo San Lucas because with American regulatory and state medical boards, you can't do innovative medicine even if you get dramatic improvements. Uh, we had an interesting lecture last November last year by Dr. Maroon, who's a neurosurgeon, using a ketogenic diet that's low in calories uh, with 2-deoxyglucose and uh, pyroglutamine uh, to stop brain tumors. And just by using that alone, without even using chemo, they had uh, a doubling and tripling of the survival rates of tumors that will kill you in six months. You can see dissolution where people are really going in remission just with that alone. But well, a lot of these things at, won't develop because because the, the, the science you write, medicine, science is being attacked, it's yeah. being politicized, it's being corporatized, and it's going black op also, where it's only the science is only available now, including NASA, for the space weapons program and for defense, but it's not being trickled down to the universities, to the public, to anybody that wants to know science. And what they do is they, they have these phony arguments for intellectual property rights for new new uh, uh, pharmaceuticals to protect the pharmaceutical companies when you might be able to save lives if you move more quickly. So I, I think the point here, I'm, I'm just bringing this up because of the immediate danger of this, but I want to come back to this question of why Obama has to go. And, and you saw in the three debates, especially the last two, you saw Obama being cheered on by the media for being an arrogant, vicious creature. Why is that? Why is that? Why would the media cheer him for being like a rooster in a cockfight? Uh, well, this is I, not. This is really you know, sickening, isn't it? Some of the media were so put off by Bush and Cheney, they don't want to admit that they they chose someone who's even more evil, but is because he's African American and because he speaks in a certain way, they are. En enamored of him. I mean, Chris Matthews actually said he gets goosebumps up and down his legs when he hears Obama speak. That's now, sickening. I you know, and the problem is he, he used that race card, by the way, and use it so that we will have Sharia law in America before the end of a second term if he gets in again. Well, I'm not so worried about Sharia law. I'm worried about whether we're going to exist as a nation because well, uh, yeah, but that's part of the uh, that's part of the demolition, though. Is well, that, it's, yeah. I, I'm not. I, I I don't buy into that. I think that the key problem with Obama is that he's willing to do whatever he's told, up to and including launching thermonuclear war, and that's the reason he's got to go. If we get him out, these other questions that people are so frightened about, we'll be able to deal with. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The uh, Sharia law is just a symptom of the ongoing death of the body politic of America. Amazing. Yeah, Obama has to go, as they say, if don't just vote for anybody. If we don't vote for Romney, we're going to have Obama, and America will cease to exist. Crossroads now. There's a uh, remember like that song, uh, Charlie Daniels band. The devil went down to Georgia, and of course uh, he wanted to play, a, a, trying to out fiddle. Well, we got Obama trying to out fiddle uh, Romney, and Romney's not the devil. What we're trying to see, or, or and Obama's figuring that if he continues to act aggressive, continues to act uh, his version of presidential, which is to act like a psychopathic dictator. I mean, you can actually see palpable changes to his face when he started talking about going after Osama bin Laden, which I know from my sources has been dead for years before he so-called killed him. But he, these drone strikes, you can tell one of the things he does, he doesn't skip, he skips a lot of his, his special situation room meetings, he doesn't skip the meetings with his baseball cards of death. No, he's a killer. He's, he's, he's a, a killer. killer. Yeah. This is a president who will kill and has killed. But I, I like the comment by, 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 by Romney that says you can't kill your way out of this situation. 
You can't kill your way out of this mess. That was a very yeah. useful statement. Let me tell you something that I found really fascinating, because I watched the debate uh, with everyone else Monday night, and I listened to the the spin from both sides. I mean, the Republicans were ridiculous. The Democrats were ridiculous. It was a very bad debate, because there were no real serious issues, uh, no solutions put forward, especially from Obama, but also from Romney. He didn't really differentiate himself except by pointing out that if you destroy the U.S. economy, you can't have a strong position in the world. So that was one point. But here's something that really fascinated me. The next day, while the American press was grading them on points and style and this and that, the German press, which has been sycophantic in its support of Obama, which has been just so enamored with Obama that it's disgusting, all of them came out and said Romney won the debate because he showed a different uh, vision of America to us in Europe. The Süddeutsche Zeitung, the Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung, Die Welt, uh, Der Spiegel, the, the equivalent of Time magazine, all of them emphasized Romney talking about peace, peace, peace. Romney used the word peace 14 times. Obama didn't use it once. And that was a gigantic shift in Europe, because up to that point, and I know this because I was in Europe for most of the last year, everybody was saying, oh, you got to get Obama back in, Obama's the only choice. That shifted in Europe, and it is shifting in the United States as well, even though we have the worst media in the world right now that's cheerleading Obama. Yeah. Well, the media does, it will protect him, and what's really complicit with this issue that, uh, you know, I saw the report on Fox News last night when they were releasing this information that a lot of the media are friends with these 300 plus people that got these you know real time emails knowing that this was a real problem and they didn't the media literally you literally came together and shielded Obama from the exposure to the truth in the media well, one there's so one didn't do the interesting job. but there's one interesting anomaly to that which is Anderson Cooper of CNN to his credit when he found out that one of their reporters had found the handwritten notes of Ambassador Stevens, he went with it publicly immediately instead of suppressing it. And that really was the first break from the, the so-called liberal media. And I will point out something else, although I don't particularly like CNN. I thought after the debate the other day where Obama made this really condescending, nasty quip about the Navy and that we, we don't need ships because for the same reason we don't need bayonets and horses, Anderson Cooper said, well, I was in the Marines and I know something. The Marines still use bayonets and we still use horses in Afghanistan. And battleships are also ships, or aircraft carriers are also ships. So, you know, it's, it's the monolith of the media is even breaking down. But here's the point. If anybody can see what's really going on with the country, they see that Romney is right in saying, that we're worse economically than we were four years ago. Obama can no longer say he was given a bad hand and he needs more time because he continued the bad policies that brought us into the crisis. So I think people are figuring that out. The only question is people getting to the polls and making sure that Obama's beaten, number one. And number two, realizing that just a regime change doesn't mean anything. You've got to change the thinking of the population on economic policy, and we've got to understand the unique quality of our American republic, that it was built against an empire, and that empire still exists in the world today, and we have to fight and destroy it. And that's the British empire that controls Obama as a puppet, and that's angling through the neocons and others to try and control Romney after the election. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And, and I think if we surround Romney with the right people, he can work with them. In other words, he, he's the kind of person, this is why he's a good business manager, to get businesses back on track. It's like a surgeon, okay? And I, I use an example of someone that has, say, multiple intra-abdominal secondary tumors and abscesses. And when you open somebody up and you look at the CT scan, you get an idea, but until you get into the pericolic gutters and Douglas Poach and you dig around and feel organs with your hands, you don't know exactly what you have to cut out and what you have to literally irrigate and which areas you're going to have to cut out loops of bowel uh, and which areas are... So in other words, oh, Romney's like that. He goes to a company like KB Toys didn't make it, but there's a lot of companies that did make it. And 
they'll often say, well, these companies, uh, they were predatory, uh, you know, company Bain Capital. No, they were like surgeons coming in to say, your company's dying. We're the, we're the source of last resort. If you do the things we have, you have a chance of recovering. If not, you're dead. And well, I don't I think, think people, and I don't think I, I, people understand that 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 this kind of thing isn't just kind of a rip and tear, you know, uh, predatory capitalism. This is what needs to happen to, to America. You can't have sixteen billion dollars, trillion dollars in debt, soon to be twenty or twenty-two or thirty trillion dollars. You can't be, be saying you're going to cut so many trillions of dollars from the American military budget and have a safe America. Uh, you certainly can't have any foreign policy if you do that. But you can't have point, 761 billion, 721 billion cut from Medicare, saying it's savings by reducing prices of different things, when actual fact you're cutting services and setting up a panel to deny care to people that are seniors already paid all their life. This is craziness, and it doesn't add up, does it? Well, and, and we can make the changes that are necessary, but you can't do it under Obama. And the no. question is not whether Mitt Romney has a business experience or this or that, the most important qualification he has, as I said at the beginning, is that he's not Obama. And that means that he... Well, he worked with other people, too. He worked with other people. He may be open to changes, and that's what we have to fight for. So, you know, I would urge people, urge your listeners to go to LaRouchePak.com Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and hear the latest of the Friday Project broadcasts of LaRouche. This will be his fourth one, and he said this week he will lay out the importance of what happened at Benghazi for understanding both what's wrong with Obama and what we must do if we wish to address this problem of war and the danger of war. So that's Lyndon LaRouche, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, this Friday night, and uh, I, I know people know to go to LaRouchePack.com. I think, Dr. Deagle, you've been putting links to this up on your, your website. Yes, exactly. All the links are up there. The number, of course, to call is 800-922-2907. Is that correct? Yeah, and if you call that number, that's also the number, by the way. We're here in Houston in the last days of the Keisha Rogers drive for uh, her congressional campaign. She's running as a Democrat on a ticket explicitly to impeach Obama and to rebuild the nation. So the, the number to call to talk to us is 800-922-2907, and it's LaRouchePack.com, Friday night at 8 p.m. It will be archived if you can't make it, then. I know on the West Coast that's, that's rush hour, 5 p.m., but in any case, uh, it is going to be archived. And what Lynn has done with the last three including the last two have been after debates, he's essentially gotten people back to the higher view of statecraft as opposed to the idiot view of the American people that comes out of these political consultants who think they can give us glib phrases and we'll fall all over ourselves to like them. And I, I, LaRouche challenges you to think, to, to make up your mind based on science as opposed to popular opinion. So, uh, again, I encourage people, 8 p.m. Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, LaRouchePack.com, and the number is 800-922-2907. If we can have uh, LaRouche pop in uh, someday to uh, to remind our audience on that, uh, maybe on I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I think it's important people realize we absolutely have to remove Obama, and we're hoping and praying this final event, if the media keeps pressing on it, and I think CNN and Fox are definitely doing that. If the people wake up, especially in the swing states, to realize just how dangerous it is to have someone that's lying and is mentally ill with his hand near the nuclear football, that we as a nation will be destroyed if Obama gets a second term. That's right. Talk to you next week. Amazing. Thank you, Harley. And back in a moment, Hour 3 coming up with Professor James McCanney. You don't want to miss it. Stay tuned to the Nutramedical Report.